The challenger today, Al Weincheck of South Weymouth. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Cattlepin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and you all know by now that this program is on videotape. We do our taping right here at Sammy White's Brighton Bowl. It's always three strings of Cattlepin Bowling, and it is always that total pinfall which is going to determine our winner. The winner is rewarded with a handsome marble-based trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. The runner-up receives a smaller but otherwise identical version, indicating he was a participant on our show. Now let's talk some money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,150. $700 of that goes to the winner. $300 goes to the runner-up. The other $150 is earned by each string. That is to say, the winner of each string will get $50. And if they tie in a string, then we would give them each $25. Now for a 400 series, there's an extra bonus of $100. We have a high-low jackpot, $1,710, which is now up to $150. Our home viewer jackpot has started all over again at $50. Now, for three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares in the same string, that establishes a bonus of $50. Then each subsequent consecutive mark of that same string would be worth $50 each, as long as he can keep it going. And for three strikes in a row, which Rich Hawk Hallis knows a little bit about after last week, that's an extra bonus of $1,000. And each subsequent consecutive strike after those three would be worth $1,000 each. That's about it. We'll get started right after this. The line, Al Weincheck, South Weymouth. Al's first appearance on our show. He has a league average of 120. His high single is 195 and his high triple 459. And now, Al is single and uh, works as a CAT scan technologist. I think it's the first at uh, Brockton Hospital. That's the first for us. Cat scan technologist. He's representing the Colonial Bowl. He had a 644 in winning his roll off. That's for five strings, as you know. waiting for that piece of wood there. All right, a pair of nines. That's exactly how our defending champion started off last week. In fact, I believe he had four or five consecutive nines, but he had a whale of a third string, a great big heat. He started out with an 88 for the first string, but came back in the third with a 160. Four horsemen right side. Richard Rich Hawk Hallis. In that third string, had three strikes in a row for an additional bonus of $1,000. Richard is married, no children yet. Average 127, high single 184, high triple 486. Oh yes, all right. Yes, a beautiful spare. Now our challenger, Al Weincheck, comes up, moving to lane 38 here at Sammy White's Brighton Bowl. This is the old Woolworth, five and ten. Here you go, baby. Here you go. Read this one. Read this one. You got to go. 
three successive nines for today's challenger, Al Weincheck. And a strike. Our defending champion, Hawk Callis. Rich is head receiver for Sam Hootstein and Sons. He's representing the Malden Square Bowler Drone. That's a tough split. That really is. That's that's really rough. Object pin becomes the two. Didn't do uh, what he thought it would, nor what I thought it would, too, because it looked as if he hit it in exactly the right spot. All right, it is a nine. We're going to take a little break here. And I'll remind you that at the end of four frames in the first string of our match today, the score, our defending champion, Rich Hallis, 40, and our challenger today, Al Weincheck of South Weymouth, 37 with two bonus balls to roll. Frame and got a couple of bonus balls to roll here. Here's the first. See if he can get some use out of that piece of wood. Nope. Got those three, but didn't get a chance to hit the piece of wood and maybe kick it over. In fact, to, we might even have a strike. Nope, not quite. Hey, that's his second mark. Now our defending champion, Rich Hallis, gets up. pin to pick up for a spare. He has it. Challenger Al Weincheck coming up. As you see, he has a spare in the sixth. Al Gilio keeping score on that big scoreboard, and Keith Williams keeping score beside me today. Here we go. Big hit. Big nine. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, in his accustomed spot. 
Here we go for a spare. Oh, just missing it. Come on, kid. Take the eye. Take the eye. There you go. Joanne Pato, our statistician and secretary, and the guy who puts it together and keeps on, it together top, is our producer director, Phil Rubin. You got it, baby. You got him going. Moving right up against that four pin, some wood. Can he kick that six pin over? Well, he's going to go the other way. Nope, it fell the wrong way. Waiting for the wood. Settle down. Now for a 10. And he has it. Now it's bonus money time, possibly, for Rich Hallis. That's seven to go down. Can he move it? A great try. A great try. It wasn't good enough for the bonus money, but it was a great try. One pin separating our bowlers right now. And this man, our defending champion, Rich Hallis, has that one pin lead. Opposite a 10 box. Six. Nice shot. So when he comes back up, he will be working on a bonus ball. Now the final two frames of the first string for today's challenger, Al Weincheck of South Weymouth, making his first appearance on our show. Wow. Got away with it, baby. Got away with it. Come on. One and three. Nope, didn't get the pocket. All right, baby, all right, here you go. Seven. The winner of today's show will sit down for a couple of months because starting next Saturday, right, and uh, that will be at 11 a.m., that is in Boston, it'll be on at noontime in Springfield. The women return for the next couple of months. And our defending champion, Shelly Carr, will be here to defend her title. Now we have a bonus ball coming up for Rich Hallis. Big, big hit, I guess so. Strike. So that puts him at 116 already, so he has won $50 at least for winning this string. And he has two marks in a row and a chance for $50 more. Nope. Oh, 
All right, there'll be no more bonus money than the $50, which he will get for being the winner of the first string. All right, 130. 19-pin lead. After one for our defending champion, Rich Hallis. There it is. Rich Hallis of Chelsea, today's defending champion, 130. Challenger, Al Weincheck of South Weymouth, 111. Rich Hallis, being our defending champion, leads off the middle string. And he leads in the match by 19 pins, having rolled a 130 opening string to 111 for his challenger. Nope, it didn't come back and get it. Time call. Ralph Stewart wants to take a look at this. If it is this side, he's got a deadwood line there and He's, it's 24 inches, two feet this side of uh, the middle of the head pin. And as soon as a piece of wood touches it or comes this side of it, it has to be removed. you that the finals for the 1984 Northeast Classic are going to be held next weekend, December 1st and 2nd, right here, Sammy White's right and low. Big bomb! Hot pellets. The finalists will include bowlers from Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and from Canada. That's the Northeast Classic finals next Saturday and Sunday right here at Sammy White's right and low. Now here's Al Weincheck from South Weymouth, today's challenger. Oh, yes. All right. Pretty, as you see, that one piece of wood come back across and knock down the 10 to complete the spare. Bonus. All right. What a start. Here are the middle string for today's challenger. Both bowlers coming up to work on strikes. First, Hawk Hallis. Rocking, but if it falls this way, he's got another strike, but it's not going to. All right, spare leave. There he goes. He's got it. Two marks in a row. He has picked up the only bonus money so far, $50 for winning that first string. All right, the drop is seven, but the shot is extremely difficult because parallel pins, five and six plus the 10. He moved it, but boy, when they're parallel, it is tough. Fifty-seven he has through four. Now a chance for bonus money for Al Weincheck. Today's challenger. He's now on lane 38 here at Sammy White's Brighton Bow. The lanes we use, 37 and 38. All right, that's the first ball getting him a seven. These three gets him $50. Yes, he has it. $50 in bonus money, and it's still alive.
50 so far. Can he move that three pin over? Not enough. A 10, and that picks up for him 10 pins of the 19 pin lead. It's cut to nine now. And the score at the end of four in the middle string. And I told you, Palace had a 130 opener, wine check a 111. Now, after four in the middle, it is wine check 67, Palace 57. Line. He's our defending champion. He had three unsuccessful tries. First three times he came on the show, he bowled very well, but someone else bowled just a little bit better. However, last week, with a 163rd string, he came from behind and beat Charlie Jupris. Nine drop. He sure didn't do that on purpose. He knew he had to hit the pin because the wood just was in no position where it was going to make that go. It was lying beside it. Now today's challenger. Held that one just a little too long. Bring it in, bring it in. All the way home. All right, come on, clean it up, clean it up. Just one. A little murmuring in the crowd and saying, boy, that's hard to do to hit that object pin and get it only and have it go to the right, the ball go to the left. Not take anything else out. So it's an eight box. This would seem to be uh, ten at best. He tried. be a little bit difficult to make that one pin now with that wood there but he got it okay at the moment just about the halfway point in the match Rich Hallis has a 20 pin lead and here he goes half Worcester left It's still rolling, but I don't think it's going to have enough momentum. Well, it rocked it a little bit, didn't it? A 10. 96 through 7. Yes. Now the single pin. This can be, as you know, a little difficult where it's right there on the edge of the cliff. Like that. All right. So it remains a nine box. Now our challenger, Al Weincheck. Al has $50 in bonus money for 
getting marks in the first three frames of this string. Looking for the good out. Unfortunately, there was no good out. It winds up as a five box. Half Worcester left. Chopping wood right now, but one of the frustrations that also makes this game intriguing, the fact that they are tall, skinny pins and a small ball. Waiting for the wood to stop rolling. Now it's rolling away so he can go but he did not get the pin he had to get. Twenty-five pin lead in the match at the moment for Hawk Hallis. again so he's got wood all he has to do is flick by this pin just get it give it a little touch like that and he's got it made if it would help that time it does not always as you know Bonus. Big strike. Okay, two bonus balls to row, and obviously a chance for fifty dollars in bonus money, or more, should he throw another strike. Just two. Big nine. Excellent. 144 middle string for Hawk Hallis. Now a challenger, Al Weinchick, is at 99. Callis with an excellent chance for 400. He's already at 274. Ralph Stewart gets the loose ball and we'll get a hand for it. An eight. 107 and a frame to go. He's a 120 bowler. He rolled a 111 opening string. And he'll do a little better in the middle string. How much better will depend on what he does with this ball. Does he get a mark? No. Okay, then the best he can do is 117. One sixteen. Two twenty-seven. And a big, big lead right now for our defending champion. As we tilt up and take a look at the score at the end of two.
Defending champion Hawk Hallis 274 and challenger Al Weincheck 227. Al Weincheck on the line and trailing by 47 pins. Come on, come on, come on. All right, get away. Seven box. Alternate. Come on. All right, all right. Come on, keep falling. One and seven. Hilo Jackpot, the one seven ten. Worth 150 at the end of our program. Home viewer starting off again at 50 since we had a winner last week. Nine. Rich Hawk Hallis, comfortable 47 pin lead going into this third string. But then again, as far as most bowlers are concerned, what is a comfortable lead? There is no such thing, I guess. Last week, Charlie Jutras had a 29-pin lead going into the third string, and uh, he lost. This is a tough one to make. Four horsemen left side plus the nine pin. And that's how it can be made if you can get that sidewall action to come back and pick up the inboard pin. But it's always so tough because as you saw, the pin or the ball fly off to the right, but in most cases they go on each side of either the eight or the nine. Whereas the corner pin is usually easier to get. But that was done and done very, very well. Al Weincheck looked as if he had it together starting the middle string. He started off with a spare, a strike, and a spare for $50 in bonus money. But he hasn't had a mark since then. In the first string, he had a pair of uh, marks, one strike, one spare. But since the third frame of the second string, he hasn't had a mark. On, yeah. There! Maybe all it needed was for me to say that. All right, six is the fill. And now he wanted that wood to stay maybe a little bit closer to the seven. But it appears as if he hits that piece of wood, the nearer one, and then the ball will carry. Or the pins. Nope. It didn't work the way we thought it would. Nine. So he adds nine more, that puts him up by 56. He's opposite a strike. Ralph Stewart calls time, going down to get the loose ball, and now gives a signal, go ahead, press the reset button. Tough lead. Now the question is, does he feel that that piece of wood is in a position where he can make it go across and get the others? 
Well, he had to hit it more to the left, as we all know, in order to make it move to the right. Seven. So immediately, right there, Al Weincheck has picked up three pins. The lead now 53, and it will be cut by whatever he gets on the next two that he rolls. Five so far. Total of nine. Yes. Okay, the lead is at 44 right now. It was 47 coming into this third string. See what Hawk Hallis can do. Missed the single once before, but now he has some wood there, which gave him uh, a little more confidence as he went down there, knowing that he didn't have to go so close to the edge, and that that wood would, if he were to miss the, the 10, instead of hitting it directly, at least the wood would divert it into the 10. So he was able to get it. Bonus. An eight box. Now we'll have to see what our challenger Al Weincheck does. Guess it's going to be five. The only bonus money so far has been the $50, which was won by Hawk Hallis for the first string and for the second string. All right, it's a good drop. Now a single pin, the four to pick up for a spare for our challenger. He has it. Al Weincheck has an opportunity to win this third string. It's doubtful that he would be able to win the match. Virtually impossible. A 126 is what Hawk Hallis would like to get for an extra $100 in bonus money for a 400 series. No! He flew it but didn't get it. Nine box. He still has a 43 pin lead in completed frames. He's opposite a spare. But right now, there's a break. Oh, is that a break? Maybe a strike, maybe a strike, it is. Slow motion strike. The seven pin went down. All right, now a chance 
for some bonus money within the string and also by possibly winning the string for our challenger. Come on up. Come on, take those two. Okay, there's an eight. Good chance for another. And yes, okay, he has two marks in a row. Big, big hit. Okay, here it is. Single pin right now, the four. No, too bad. Nope. It's going to be a 125. So Rich Hallis is going to be the man who will sit home as defending champion for a couple of months while the women take over. Is he going to get his 126? He almost had two in a row. He got it. All right, chance for bonus all around here. Got a chance to win the string for 50, put three together for 50, and also get 100 for 400. So he's got $200 right now. He did it. He got, he got it. All right. He just needs one pin for 400, so it appears Right now, as we see, that was worth $200 that time because it gave him three marks in a row, wins the string, and also gets him. All right. That also puts him high on our list for the five top bowlers for our next big show. All right. He did well. He did a 134, wins the string, picks up another 50 for that. Okay, so he picks up $300 in bonus money, plus the uh, $700 for winning, and he'll get first try at our high-low jackpot, which is worth $150 right now. And as I said, he'll sit home as our defending men's champion for the next couple of months, as the women will be taking over. And next week, you'll see Shelly Carr as she attempts to defend her title, which she's been holding for about 10 months. Okay, we'll get to the high-low jackpot. There's the final score. We'll give it to you one more time. 408 for Hawk Hallis. And Al Weincheck, 352. Easy one for me to roll, huh? That means that, of course, the, the odds have decreased greatly. Unfortunately, I suppose I have to also point out that the reward has uh, decreased, too, because we have $50 here in our home viewer jackpot. What all these cards represent, again, for anybody who might not know, these are guesses as to what the total pinfall would be on a particular day when they hoped their card would be chosen. That's both bowlers combined. And today, that total comes out to 760. Now, if uh, I draw a card there and the person has anywhere 10 either side of that 760, in other words, from 750 to 770, then they would win the $50 jackpot. If not, then we'll add $50 and it'll be worth $100 next week. But regardless, the person is going to win some prize. First, I'll tell you where you sh should send your cards. Please send it to Candlepin Bowling. WCVB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, zip code number 02192. And remember that even if you're nowhere near that number, if I draw your card, you'll get a couple of prizes anyway. Today's prizes for the card that I draw will be these. Yours or not, okay? Let's go over in here and take a guess. Remember, anywhere from 750 to 770 will win $50. This is submitted by uh, Mr. Miss, no, it's Mrs. Josephine Noon, 353 Merrimack Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. And her guess is 676. No, no, not, not, not nearly close. Oh, we had another $50. And next week it'll be worth $100. Okay, there's $150 right now in our high-low jackpot. And once again, Hawk, you get first try at it.
Ooh, all right. Okay, Al. Oh, you almost got a little consolation prize, huh? Okay, would you stand here, please? And Rich will be over there. You just stand here and face the camera. Uh, the only thing I can say right now, Al, is that uh, I'll remind you that this guy standing next to you had three tries on this show before he won. He, <laughs> and so uh, don't feel bad about it. Uh, hundreds of guys have come on here and not made it the first time, made it again oh, the next time. You have that little trophy to uh, remember us by and $50 mm -hmm. in bonus money. This one's out of the way. Next one will be easy, okay? That's true. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And Rich, you did it, you son of a gun. Do you know that you're, you're, you're number three on the list, too, for the big show? Did really? you realize that? No, huh? yeah. not really. Isn't that been quite a day, hasn't sure. it? Sure. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, we've got that, and let's see, how much money did you make? $300 in bonus money, plus 700 Last week, eighteen fifty. You son of a gun, you're doing all right. <laughs> okay. a lot. Now take a vacation for a couple of months, and the women yeah. take over. We'll okay. see you again after sure. the first Thank of the you. year. Okay. Remember, next week, it'll be Shelly Carr defending her title as the women take over on Candlepin Bowling. Don Gillis inviting you to be there, okay?